Hi, this is Nolan from Benchmark, and in today's video, I'm gonna be going over four things you can do to lengthen the lifetime of your receiver. So let's get right into it. And just before we get into this video, I'm gonna just ask you guys to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It helps us out a great deal, more than you can ever know. So if you have a second, please hit that subscribe button down below, thank you. So my first tip is going to be to dry your receiver off before you put it in the case. So I know it's tempting, you know, it's raining cats and dogs, you don't wanna take a minute to dry your stuff off, you just wanna get in the vehicle, get out of, off the job site, get home and dry off, but that can cost you big time down the road. There's been countless times where we've had receivers come in um, that are actually filled with water from doing something similar to this. So yes, they can survive a one meter immersion for 30 minutes in water, but that does not mean you can just put them in the case wet. That water inside those foam cases, it turns into a vapor and it just slowly permeates inside the receiver. And that leads to big issues down the road. You get a lot of water that gets trapped inside the receiver and that can damage your internals and cause short circuits and rust out the board. And I'll see if I can find a video. If not, I will find some sort of picture for you guys of a S321. We actually, somebody left inside the case really wet and the case had water in it and we actually got a significant amount of water inside the receiver. Luckily enough for this customer, we were able to open it up, dry it out completely, clean it up a bit, put it back together and it worked, but uh, I'm gonna go with that is the exception rather than the rule. Most of the time, if you get water inside these receivers, you're gonna be in for a pretty big headache and a very big repair bill. So that's my first tip. Just make sure you properly dry your equipment before you put it back inside the case. So the next tip I'm gonna give you guys is to make sure that you take the batteries outside of the receiver before you put it inside the case. And there is a good reason for that and that is to avoid cooking the receiver. And I know this one happens a lot because nine times out of 10, when somebody sends a receiver to take a look at or they're trading it in, the batteries are still inside the receiver. So I know there's quite a few of you out there who do it, even if not all of you want to particularly admit that. And the reason you wanna take the batteries outside of the receiver is if you leave them in and your receiver is either left on or accidentally becomes turned on inside the case, you can actually cook the internals on this and damage the, uh, the internal parts of this receiver. You gotta remember, this foam, it's good for absorbing impacts, but it's also really good at retaining heat. So if the receiver's on and the radio's broadcasting, that generates heat and there's nowhere for that heat to escape. So slowly but surely, you're gonna increase the temperature on that receiver. And over time, you're gonna wear out the receiver faster. You're gonna put some more stress than you need to on the internal boards, on the internal radio, things like that. And you're going to damage those components. And it may not be the first time you do it, it may not be the 10th time you do it, but this just over time, it slowly adds up and it's going to affect the receiver. So please, when you're putting those receivers away, just pop the batteries out before you put it in. Just do a little check, hit that power button, make sure you have no power inside the receiver before you put it away. It's a good, simple little check to make sure that you can make these receivers last as long as possible. So this next tip maybe does not extend the life of your receiver per se, but it will extend your life and reduce your work stress significantly. And it has to do with the external radio antennas of all of the RTK receivers that we ever see. And it really comes down to one thing and that's avoiding damage to these antennas. So the most common complaint we get in the office about RTK receivers that are using UHF based rover is a reduction in range from when they initially bought it. And 99 times out of 100, that issue comes down to these bad boys, the external radio antennas. And that is because guys are not properly storing them and they're damaging the antennas, whether that's in inadvertently or, uh, you know, you're cutting a corner and you, you're kind of pushing it a bit and you're accidentally doing some damage to these uh, antennas. And that, that's because these antennas, yes, they're flexible, but that doesn't mean you should be flexing and forcing them inside the case. There's actually a filament inside of these antennas that allows them to receive the, the radio signals. And when you force and bend those antennas into the case, you're actually going to damage that internal filament. And repeated times of doing this will actually um, reduce your radio range as the antenna is less effective now. And there's an easy fix for this, obviously, it is, replacing the antenna, but obviously you don't want to be spending 189 bucks every time you need to replace this antenna. There's obviously better things you can be spending on your money on for sure. So if you watch this video now, you can see that I'm carefully 
placing that antenna in there. I'm making sure not to take any unnecessary bends and I'm making sure to not unnecessarily force the antenna inside so that I can lengthen the lifetime of that antenna as much as possible. And I know I've seen some case modifications of guys cutting the case to leave the antennas on the receivers. I would caution you to avoid that as these cases are designed to protect the receiver as best as possible. And when you make those modifications, uh, you're putting your receiver at risk if you take an unnecessary drop. And in my opinion, it's just not worth taking that risk when you can just take the simple action of unscrewing the antenna and then just properly and neatly storing it inside the case. And now my last tip here, again, it's not necessarily involved with your receiver directly, but it will help you avoid any costly accidental repairs. So, so that entails taking proper care and making sure that your poles and tripods and tri bracks and your extension poles are in good shape. If you got a crack in one of these poles or your tripod's a bit loose and you're, you know, you're pushing it a bit on the lifetime, I would urge you to replace that pole or that tripod and there's a good reason for that. That pole or tripod could fail and drop your receiver and yeah, they're rated for a two meter drop, um, but that's a two meter drop onto flat concrete. That's not taking into account your working environment where there may be a rock or an edge or something like that that can hit the receiver and cause more you know, sharp impact and potentially damage the components of that receiver. So that, this was a big one on the 321 where guys, you know, would maybe lay the pole on the edge of their truck or they, the pole would fail, something along those lines. And then the receiver would fall and it would break the battery door. Yeah, the receiver still works fine, but it's, your battery door is now broken and you now have a compromised seal where potentially water could get in if you don't get that repaired quickly. So I would urge you if you know your pole's getting a bit worn out, it looks like there's some cracks, there looks like it looks like there's some wear and tear, you know, maybe the thread is looking like it's getting a bit threadbare and you know it's getting worn out and it's not really fitting on your receiver properly anymore. I would urge you to replace those poles, those tripods before you get an issue with it that you know you could have saved yourself a couple thousand dollar repair bill by spending uh, 185 200 bucks on a pole and a new tripod. So I would urge you if you get the chance replace those as soon as you can and keep keep on top of it. You don't want to let those get away from you because it's no fun getting a couple thousand dollar repair bill to fix a broken receiver. And that is everything for today's video. If you have any questions about anything you've seen on our YouTube channel, please give us a call at 1-888-286-3204 or visit us on the web at bench-mark.ca.